you all should be able to see my screen. And it should be the same green that Nigel's was, which I've I'm taken to call in um, like the inverse of creamsicle, which I think there's a technical color for this green that's not that, but to me, somehow that's how it registers. Um, so, so this is the, the theme that we worked on with Lyricis um, when it was uh, an extension of Carapace. Um, so we, we did that whole project there. We got to the point where we were almost ready to cut a release, cut a big PR against Carapace, and then Carapace's um, uh, like future was called into question by them probably not supporting Drupal 9 um, and the maintainers going away. So we had to refactor the whole thing on top of Bootstrap. Um, it appears that Bootstrap Barrio is the sort of accepted safe Bootstrap based theme, you know, bottom layer. Um, so that's what we chose here. Um, so we've now We've now got it back essentially to the point where we were with Carapace about a month ago, where we were pretty well happy with how things were functioning. It essentially delivers the Islandora 7 user experience for Islandora 8. Um, and, um, and we're again ready to figure out, okay, so we, we figured out a lot of things that probably ought to go into Islandora defaults, like they're just good default settings for everybody who spins up a new Islandora. And also we figured out the the extra stuff that you have to do if you want to use Bootstrap Barrio as the base theme. And then um, there are a few theme specific things that you have to do. Um, uh, so having delivering a sub theme like Carapace, um, but sort of as like the Islandora starter theme um, because, uh, seems necessary because you have to set a few blocks and, um, and you have to do that in a theme. You can't do that in a module or, or somewhere else unless somebody uh, is gonna find a workaround on this. We haven't found one yet. So anyway, long way of saying, um, if you all saw a demo from me about a month ago, it would have looked relatively similar, but it would have been based on adaptive theme and uh, carapace. And now this one is totally over to Bootstrap Barrio. Um, and, um, and we're excited to have hit that point. Um, so basically the gist of this is there is a, you know, um, featured collections on the homepage, um, all of the header and footer and you know, the, the colors, um, the logo, all of this stuff is customizable. When I log in, you can see how some of that is set. Um, there's sort of a standard uh, Islandora 7 search experience. You saw Nigel uh, demoing a very similar version um, of this when he had his screen up. Um, but, you know, you get facets, you can click on a facet, it says you selected this facet, and it you know, does what you would expect with that. Um, uh, I think I have an example object for basically everything you might expect from an Islandora instance. So we'll open a book, audio, video, large image, PDF. Um, we can pop open a newspaper. And here's a basic image. Okay, and then there's compounds in another collection here. We'll go back to browse collections. Okay. Um, so books are currently using the Open Sea Dragon paged viewer. Um, the way we have this configured, there's a, a bug here. Um, let me switch to this object to show you a not bugged version. This metadata block, the intention here is to do essentially a left join um, where we show only the, the metadata for which there are values. Um, but with paged content, uh, both newspaper volumes and books, for some reason that left join is not working. Um, Herzl has found a, uh, a views issue 
Um, so there, there's a, a known bug with views that's causing this behavior for us. Uh, so we're, we're waiting on that before pushing ahead with, with dealing with that. Um, so anyway, there's a full view for books uh, and there's also a, a, a list of pages and then you can click into individual pages here. It's like the viewer is, is disabled. There should be a viewer here, not just the download. So you should, you should be able to view each of those pages as if it's you know, an individual TIFF, which it probably is. That's books. So this is audio. Um, you can't hear birds playing, but I can. Um, again, download button, permalink. And so we have enabled, you can see we have enabled uh, path auto uh, to set um, uh, nicer URLs than just like, you know, domain slash node slash 135, which is what comes out of the box. We actually did run into an issue that we are um, going to need to work with, with Mark Jordan on um, where if you have path auto enabled and you have a path set for your repository content, um, uh, the, the media associated with workbench imports does not attach. Like it get like the, there's something about the URLs of the, that the rest API is expecting. Um, and it doesn't work, which is, is bizarre, but, uh, when path auto is, it doesn't matter whether path auto is enabled or not. It matters whether the path auto setting for repository objects is enabled. When that is enabled, it actually blocks um, media attachments to workbench imports. So I anticipate that'll be relatively easily fixable. Um, here is a video object. It's essentially the same as an audio object. Um, and the metadata displays the same way. Large image. So this is OpenSea Dragon individual object. I understand that Mirador is now a possibility. And when I'm an admin, I can show you um, uh, how you're able to actually toggle between the two, but um, I have not configured Mirador completely to work on this demo server. But you can do, you know, zooming all the same Islandora uh, 7 OpenSea Dragon behaviors that you're used to. Uh, PDFs are definitely lazy load. Um, so you saw that this, this did not load while it was in the background. It only loaded when I, when I uh, came to it. And as I scroll down, these pages should only be loading essentially as I request them by getting close to them in the browser. Um, we copied the newspaper interface from Islandora 7. I'm personally not terribly enthralled with this. Like I think we can do a better job with the user experience for newspapers, um, but it does the same thing that you expect from Islandora 7 where there's a newspaper title um, and then there are years and inside of years there are months and then inside of months there are issues and then you can click through to a newspaper issue. The pages here seem to be backwards. Um, not sure what's up with that. But just like books, anything with pages, we've added this extra tab so you can view the pages here. Looks like they are in order here and not in order. So maybe we have the ordering backwards in the, the load for this OpenSea Dragon page viewer. You can see that same thing. I was describing the same issue with um, uh, showing too many blank fields here. Obviously, we want only to show the fields that have uh, values set. Basic image. So this is. All image, images are images in Islandora 8. And basically you're just choosing a viewer. In this case, we chose no viewer because um, it's a JPEG, which is you know web enabled from the beginning uh, as compared to this, which is a TIFF um, or you know probably is generated JP2 derivatives or something. Um, and so therefore you really need this. But I could actually go, I'll leave this screen up when I log in. We can actually go and set the OpenSea Dragon viewer for this object. Um, and then it'll it'll be a JPEG loaded in OpenSea Dragon, uh, which behaves the same as a large image in OpenSea Dragon. 
Um, and then we essentially implemented the same user experience for compound objects that folks, I think, expect from Under Us 7. Um, so there is a full page refresh when you click between objects. Um, the object viewer, whatever is set for the child object, is what's, what's shown here. Um, we're talking about this most with clients um, who are interested in sort of a light um, uh, exhibit uh, functionality. So the ability to cherry pick objects from multiple collections and throw them into a compound together so that they can have a, a little slideshow exhibit type thing, um, which folks seem to be excited about. And again, you can see that the bug I was talking about, but you do have the ability to toggle between set description which is the metadata associated with the parent object and item description, which is the metadata associated with the, the child that you're on. Um, what else? I think I clicked into search a little bit. Um, there are essentially two search interfaces. Um, because of the way that Drupal forces you to do this. So this page here is, is the node view essentially for a collection object. So um, how do we implement the, the search within a collection? Really, we just embed a, a second version of our search view um, down here with a contextual filter of the, the collection you're in. But it's, it's a little irritating because when you have a view variants like that, you have to go and um, if you do something to one of them, you have to, you have to do it to the other one. So you have, to, you have to remember that you're running essentially two important view variants all the time. But it is, it is actually important that they're different because they behave a little differently. Um, for example, um, you might want to display uh, subcollections in the in the the collection view right you would like if you had nested collections you'd want collections to show here but in global search you might not want the uh, collections to show up as search results you might or you might not but by having two different views two different view variants for this you can actually change the behavior to be different for searching inside of a collection versus searching all objects Um, and I think Nigel clicked these buttons, you can change, you can essentially set the default results per page and the default list grid uh, sort criteria, but then obviously end users can override this just by clicking through. And in our implementation, the grid view essentially is just the title and the thumbnail and um, in, in the case of collections or uh, this, this is a book, not really a collection. It's sort of showing as a collection because it has children, which are pages. Um, but the, there's a limited amount of metadata uh, that you're able to display in the, the grid view. The list view, um, you, can, you can add all sorts of things here. So if you want to show you know, the first 200 characters of an abstract or something, you can add that to the, to the, um, uh, the definition of how this is shown. And that's all available for customization through the GUI. Um, I think logging in is where I was going to head next. We can click through the, the back end a little bit. Does anybody have any collection uh, questions or uh, born digital people on the call that I forget to talk about something on the front end? I think that covered everything, Noah. 
Okay, um, so let's see. Let's go and just look at a couple objects here. Oh, I said I would change the palm tree to a different viewer. So this is super easy um, to do. So essentially with the configuration of Islandora 8, you're really setting a default behavior for viewers with for every combination of resource type uh, and um, system model. And you can do a little bit more than that, but then you're, you're able to override with uh, the options that are in the display hints. So if I just change this to open Sea Dragon, we'll go from just having the JPEG embedded to having the open Sea Dragon uh, viewer for this object. There's some considerable drama at my house this morning because the five-year-old uh, does not like the pants selection that are available. So different problems for different people. You're a monster. I know, I know. Um, okay, what else do I want to show on the back end? Um, I don't know how, how many folks have actually like managed content in Islandora 8. So I'll just click through a few things here. Um, essentially, the adding a piece of content is super easy. Um, so you just go in and click add content. You can also do this contextually from within um, collections. But if you're just adding a piece of content, um, you know, going in and clicking repository item, setting all of your fields here. As I said, the key items that determine the end user user experience are the, the resource type um, and system model. That combination determines like how, how different types of objects are handled. I'll show you an example of that. So in our implementation, Compound objects, oh, this is the child, not the parent. So the compound parent is a resource type collection model compound object. So this was not in Islandora until recently. I think we PR'd this maybe a month or so ago. Um, and the reason was we needed, we needed a way to tell things that were like collection collections away from collection compounds if we wanted to be able to provide the Islandora 7 user experience for compounds. If we, if we actually set this to collection, all it's going to do is make this, is change the behavior for this object. Uh, oh, maybe there's some additional override for viewers here. Um, what I was going to say is that it should make it behave like a normal collection if, it, if those two things are set, collection, collection. Um, but we must have a specific additional override for compounds. I think you might oh. have been on the child object when you just looked at it. Okay. So if you try it again and go back to... Okay. If you saved it as collection again and, and went back to the parent one, it might... Okay, so parent... Oh, it redirected me or something? Let's yeah, see. I think there's a redirect, so you have to... Go edit here. Edit from there. So this is the parent collection. Instead of compound, we want to do just collection. And I'm going to take off this display hint because I think that's causing us trouble also. And then I, I go. click on it again from there. Yeah. Yeah. See now it just behaves like a like a collection. Um, so really, that's the only dip, the only thing that distinguishes one of these little like mini exhibit collections called compound objects from a, a, you know, what Islandora 7 would have called just a regular collection. And I'm going to go change that back before I screw up our demo. I don't think this is necessary, but I'll do it anyway. So now we're back to the compound experience. Um, 
One more thing that we had to do that's sort of related to Nigel's demo of advanced search capabilities uh, was, all right, let's, let's just edit an object we were on. What is this? This is the palm tree. Okay, so we have linked agent publisher with a, uh, with a value and then there's no second linked agent, but you could have multiple linked agents and each linked agent has this relationship type. If you're in the search, the default search experience, what Drupal will do with that because it's a single field is jam all, everything into a linked agent um, facet set here, right? And so you don't know whether it's a publisher or a creator, like Drupal doesn't know and Drupal doesn't care. And when you're doing your facet configuration, um, you actually have to you do, actually have to jump through a lot of hoops to separate the linked agent types into different facet sets. Um, so we have we worked that out, uh, and it works pretty well. But you do have to go and explicitly add the 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 um, linked agent types to each search that you want them to display in each search view. So as I mentioned before, there is a main, a global search view and there is a inside of collection search view. So you have to set the, like you have to set it in both places, which of these linked agent types do you want to be facets uh, in those? Or you can go with um, what I, I think other uh, Islandora installs have done, which is just say, all right, we don't care. Just link, lump all the linked agents together. Um, but I think for a, like the use case of um, researchers and so forth, they really want to know like what is the linked agent type to really use it as an effective facet. Dara, is there anything else like that that's worth calling out here? Not that I can think of. Okay. Yeah. And as I said, I'm I'd love to come up with a better user experience for this because I think it was sort of a, um, it's fine, it gets the job done, but I don't think, um, I don't think it's great on the usability and accessibility front. And I, I think it's, it's sort of difficult. Um, like we have more information. We actually have a thumbnail for each of these. Why not show the thumbnails um, is one way to look at it. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot we could do with this. I think that's an interesting thing. Uh, if there's a, a, a newspaper solution pack or something that gets pulled together again, I think that's a, a worthy thing to consider in the community. So that's the quick overview. Oh, I, oh, I promised uh, a little bit of theming overview. So as I said, there is Bootstrap Barrio. Bootstrap Barrio is the base theme. There is actually a Bootstrap. Uh, so there's Bootstrap Barrio, there's Bootstrap Barrio SAS, which if you want to use SAS and have it compile out to CSS, you have to use that as a like a second level sub theme. And then we have we have a copy of the um, of the sub theme that uses SAS that we've called the Islandora SAS. Uh, default. And so that's the one that we have enabled as the, the actual theme here. Um, and by use of the color module, we have um, made it pretty easy to change the color scheme of your site. Let's see what happened to our color scheme when I did that. Yeah, so you can see yeah, exactly kind of garish. I had it pink the other day and that was really eye popping. Um, but that's, I mean, that's as easy as this is, right? So this is uh, from our perspective, uh, a big improvement over having all of these sort of settings hard coded into to files that only developers can change. So if somebody wants to mess with their branding, they can just do it right here. Um, let's see, logo image, same way. Um, you can upload a logo. You can see that I had, I had not actually switched from Fedora as the default uh, file storage mechanism to uh, Drupal file storage when I uploaded this. Um, 
I don't know if that's a distinction worth highlighting also for folks who are setting up their own Dora installs. Where is it? Media file system. I think out of the box, this is set. It sets the default download method to Fedora. If you do this, every file you upload gets dumped into Fedora. You don't want that. It's just going to pollute your repository. So you really want this. And you can trust that the, the actual things that are meant to get to Fedora by means of Islandora will get there, even if you have this set as the default. So uploading that image is easy, setting fave icon. So these are all settings that the Bootstrap Barrio theme provides. Um, and then, you know, then there are Drupal settings, which you could use. This is why it says born digital demo, Islandora 8 digital collections on the homepage and in the footer. Um, and then there are, there are blocks that let you set these uh, um, disclaimers and so forth. So it's really all Drupal content. There are very, very few things that you have to push code to modify. Uh, Noah, I noticed you had social shares on all of your objects. Is that done with a contrib module or is that baked in? That is done with a contrib module. Um, Dara, do you remember offhand? Uh, add to any, I think. Yeah. Add to any, and the permalink is a custom module. So I believe you can configure the color of these also and the size and so forth. Uh, maybe some of that you have to push code for. But if you, disabled, if you disabled this, those would all go away. Yeah, you can override the something? template. I mean, you can override the template for those items to use anything you want. Yep. Yeah, because they're kind of big. And then these are theme settings, I think. Any other questions? Sure, uh, the, the color in the theme section, does that generate a CSV, uh, it's not CSV, CSS file in the theme folder or does it do it in like the file system? I ask because in uh, the Docker container environments, typically we don't have like a mounted uh, volume in the theme. And so like I found when I would make changes to the colors, like they would disappear with Carapace because it wrote the CSV file to the themes folder rather than like files public or whatever. But uh, how does Barrio do it? Mm, that's a good question. I haven't looked at that. Okay. So you're saying if I redeploy this instance, I would, or, or even just reboot that container you expect it would drop back to um, the old color scheme? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I don't know how Barrio is, but that's how it worked in Carapace. Mm. Also, the same for the layout as well, but it, I don't think Barrio doesn't have a layout sort of mechanism. Which, I, as if it's strange with Carapace, right? Because I don't think we generally changed it, but like if you had a particular block layout, it had to match the layout in there generation, like they generate a CSV file for however, whatever they you picked, but. Yeah, the other thing is if you're doing, if your deploy script includes a content import and you haven't ignored those settings in your content, I'm sorry, not a content import, config import, if you haven't ignored that, whatever it is, be, I can show you. Um, uh, configuration synchronization. Yeah, what we usually do is that we export those colors as a configuration that gets reapplied every time we restart. Uh, that's in our particular case. So if you ignore, if you don't ignore this oh, setting okay. and you and you have a config in, it'll it'll default you back to the originals. Or if you change, if you take out this ignore and you actually set it to the what you want for this project, and, and you then you would want to let it. Um, do that. On okay, so part. it'll regenerate the CSS file from the config on like the first time it's requested or like when yeah. the site comes up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
Um, but we haven't actually landed on the perfect way to do uh, config synchronization yet. Um, I think as part of the Whitman uh, uh, pilot project, we'll we'll get we'll get worked out like a, in a multi environment setup. Um, what exactly do we want to have here, and what do we want to treat more like the Islander defaults, where it's like set it initially, and then don't try to reapply those changes forever, but just like do that set and then treat it like like Drupal content from that point. It's not as simple as just having me restart that server. I would have to go and hit the redeploy button in our CICD uh, to see what happens when we restart it. Uh, no worries. I can always find out later. Just yeah, yeah. At the moment, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll let you know because um, it's a good question to ask. I see in the chat, Seth says, I've commented before how we need a widget that lets you, that allows you to select which file system you want for that particular upload. Yeah, I, I you know, you've been running your Islandora longer than we've been running our, our you know, Islandora 8 rather, longer than we have. And that makes good sense. That's just not something I'd run into yet. Um, but my experience so far with making that setting that I did, that I showed here, um, where was it, media, file system is if you have this selected, then things that just are in sort of standard Drupal, uh, here, I'll, I'll go and re-upload that logo and then you'll be able to see, it'll switch it over to the, to a non, um, oh, I guess I have to download it first. So now that that setting has changed, I just delete this. Go grab it off my desktop. Hit save, and this time when it comes back, it should say it should not say Fedora colon. It should say um, just BD logo one, and that will be in public files, I believe. Yeah, by default, it's public. So then if I were to add a new piece of content, um, we can do that also. It, we should see the, the assets for the new piece of, of content come in through Fedora, um, yeah, through the Fedora file system though, because Islandora itself deposits it there in its pipelines. Oh, you saw customizable banner images. Basically, we added this to repository item as well as an additional content type called homepage so that you could set those essentially on any page in the site to have a, a banner image. Um, and because it's a default Drupal file system thing now, this will have switched over to being a public files upload. Uh, the way we had it before, if you set something here, it would come in through Fedora. Um, Oops, let's do resource type, still image. We basically don't need to set anything else other than image here. Uh, we're just gonna do this to be extra safe. Should probably Oops. set a collection though, because didn't it? Yeah, you're right. No, oh, it seems okay now. Uh, might have just been newspapers that were breaking yeah. for us when we didn't have collections set. Uh, 
Um, well, I'll just use this. Let's see. My driver's license. No, we're not going to use that. We'll use whatever this is. Nope, we're not going to use that either. Bank statement. Well, Bank statement. Yeah. Uh, BD logo. We use Don. There we go. It's a tiny image. Oh, whoops. Hang on. Will this work if I do this? after the fact or do i, I have don't to think delete so that? yeah all right or you can just re-trigger the you can just re-trigger the actions you don't have to delete it and oh it. teach me how to do that that's not something i know how to do just click so you're on it's just a media right so yep. you have to go to the parent object but once it's there and it's tagged as an original file just go to the parent object okay are you there yep. yeah and then you have to, well, you, excuse me, you have to run the indexing on the parent object. So okay. go, so to, go like, to the content, content yeah, admin. Like, exactly, like go to admin content. Oh, I can't do it from that interface. I have to do it from over here. Yeah, yeah. you have to be looking at the, yeah. So now what is it, test image, that one live? So yeah. under the box yeah. to the left. And then in the drop down above there, you can just say like image, generate a service file, generate a thumbnail, et cetera. Cool. Okay. So you, you can, you have to trigger individual actions. So I would have to do all yeah. of the images. We would have to make some kind of composite action or like, you know, some kind of wrapper to do like two, two or three of them at the same time, but. Cool. That's it. It's also super handy to set up original file as the default on your media. So you don't have to remember to check it every time. That should be a default. Yeah. Yeah. Go. You can go back to the media, and you should be able to see. I should have at least those two now. Yeah. So it didn't generate fits because I didn't tell it to. But we could go back. And so can you action. click on? Can you go click on the Don Richards JPEG really quick? Yeah. And see where the file is living. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, open image a new tab. URL says fly system Fedora. Yeah. It's just whatever the field setting is. So um, mm -hmm. chances are, yeah, it's going to always be Fedora. We have them set to be Fedora by default. All right. Any other questions, requests, etc.? There was something there called service file. Is that is that sort of a back end, not showing up in in the front end kind of thing? Danny, do you want to explain the difference? It's the exact service? opposite. It's the exact opposite oh. of that. It's okay. the front end should be showing instead of the back end thing. So kind of for the most part, like if you have a really big video, a service file makes a lot of sense, right? Like your raw video goes in as your original file, and then you get like an. Oh, I see. So, so it's your access object, right? Your than... access copy, yeah. But with images, it's kind of redundant because most of the times it's just like you just get a copy of the same JPEG. So it's just like mm -hmm. the same file. It's just being served from Drupal instead of Fedora. And that's, that's the only difference. Is there going to be a capacity to hang media off of a node that is only visible on the back end? I don't know how granular various permissions get in terms of you know what you're what you're putting where, but we've got that situation where we're hanging um, files as a data stream that we only want to see in the back end. And um, ideally, we'd like to do something similar in eight. Um, yeah, it's just all Drupal access controls. So at that point, you would just have to go through and just like basically block access to like an office mm, and stuff like that. All right. Well, that is files. a very different workflow, but I guess we will figure it out. Yeah, there's no exact mole. So it's all. It's, it's still all user roles and Xacomo ran off of the user roles. It's just instead of going in and doing all this Xacomo work per object, you instead are actually just dealing with like the Drupal permissions interface. Yeah. Right. And I guess so. I want to make sure that that's going to work for multiple media hanging off of an, 
a node and not just at the node level, right? Because we certainly have things where something should be visible to everybody and something should be visible to authenticated people and something should be visible only to administrators. Yeah, it totally should be possible because it's like a super annoying for people that want it at the node level only that we've got it set up like this where like each entity can be individually configured. And so if you do want to do it like at the node level, it's like instead of doing it just once and having it apply to these like seven things, you got to actually go through each file and do it, you know, seven times or whatever. So, so it's on the it's topic set up better for you. Yeah, I'll stop now. Go ahead, Seth. Take it away. On the topic of permissions, um, so you do want to remember that the distinction between whether or not someone can get to it at all or whether it's just not being displayed, right? Because if you don't care if they know the magic URL, anyone can get to it, or do you want them to be actively denied? The thing we want active denial. So, okay, so yeah, you do need to get a very uh, permissions module or build one yourself. And while we're on this topic, uh, most of a lot of you know that I've been working on performance testing, and permissions by term uh, was working great until I hit a few hundred thousand notes, and its performance has sunk like a rock. Um, so that, that's something I'm looking into right now is if I can fix that or if I need to look for an alternative, but just to be aware that some modules don't scale. So you will need to test that out. So we're actually, I'm actively looking at whether or not there's something I can fix in there, or if we need to find something else. For example, we have about 330,000 nodes in our, uh, Drupal instance because a lot of that are like archival items in addition to like series and the digitized materials but <laughs> uh, this turned our load time for a particular search page anywhere between 40 seconds and a minute which is abysmal like i oh cringe every time i tried to show it to someone um and i found a simple fix on permissions by term that I hope they'll accept this PR, um, but it dropped it by 50, uh, more than 50% because we were caching something, uh, a response from the database because they were hitting the database over and over and over again in the module. So it's something we're looking into, but be careful with permission stuff. It can, it can hammer your site at scale. And, and uh, Oh, I was just going to ask about the alternatives. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's no. I was just going to say that it's it's really easy for anyone to just create a new workflow of those media objects, uh, because you can just say don't store anything in Fedora and I create like, my custom media used, and then I just attach this very simple module to forbidden access to it, uh, which is like three lines of code probably, and then you have something that only you can see, and then you can keep your media anyways. Yeah, not all of them will use the, a lot of the uh, permissions modules I've seen focus only on nodes and not on media yet. They, they haven't incorporated media into their strategy yet. So for permissions by term, you have to enable the sub module permissions by entity to get it to work on media instead of the node or as well as the node. Um, an alternative I'm looking, going to look at is access control light. Um, which looks promising because they don't try to hit their own databases. They focus exclusively on node grant, but that might exclude media. So again, it's something to pay close attention to when you're building this out. That was, that was my question for you, Seth, was what were the alternatives you were looking at? And I guess the only other one I can think of is really is groups, right? Or organic groups. Um, yeah, it's also recommended, but I haven't played with it at all. Like I found last night. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're, you're, this is super um, So I haven't fresh. had a chance to look at the alternatives yet. Okay, yeah, I know organic groups you can do and it does a lot of stuff and I think it should probably be able to handle all the entity types, but it's like the, what's required is like you build up more entities. Like it just takes more entities to describe how you want all of this stuff controlled. So I don't, I don't know performance wise how it's gonna behave. That's that's the other main one that I know of other than permissions by term is that. And we 
I don't want to say foolishly, but we sort of just like offered up like kind of the scaffolding for permissions by term at the beginning because it seemed better and maybe maybe with what you've just discovered, we should maybe pivot to offering people groups instead. Or we have some super simple custom off, you know, three line module or something like Herzl was talking about that we provide. But there needs to be something for, for end users that so that they don't have to do code to do this. Another sort of related thing is uh, Don's been working on getting all of these to run through the IIIF viewer so that maybe we can even disable the, the actions that create service files and thumbnails. Uh, Don, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Everything's hidden inside of the uh, um, theme, um, and it just does a URL overwrite. So um, grabs the file's URL, does what manipulation is necessary to make it compatible with uh, fetching through triple IF. And, and uh, so thumbnails, banner images, um, all of that, except for the control panel, like when you're doing the upload manage page, uh, because that's all the admins uh, theme. Um, so it's all done on the front end. It's all cached. Um, I do not know the performance difference between Fly Systems uh, built-in file system cache versus uh, Image uh, IIIF's uh, caching system. Uh, but uh, it seems very promising. Um, got it to work <laughs> this morning uh, uh, fully. So. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that's why it wasn't part of Noah's demo, but um, it is it is working and it looks uh, really straightforward and simple. And if you need to um, uh, modify it, you don't have to be a genius to look through the 20 lines of code to get it. So, Don, was that part of our theme where you made that change or is that a PR that would be made somewhere into Islandora if, if other folks are interested in that? It's part of our theme at the at the moment. Okay. So uh, I promised we'd talk a little bit about how we get the stuff that we've built and promised to go back into the community, back into the community. Um, Herzl and I have been talking about this quite a bit and we think we should PR a whole bunch of things to Islandora defaults and then let Danny and other folks who, who, you know, who want to dig through it and see what's worth accepting there. Um, and then there's, there's just a little bit of like, okay, so you wanna use Bootstrap Barrio as your starter theme, like here's how you do that. And so that's another little chunk. And maybe this thing that Don has uh, ought to get chunked into that because it really sounds like a theme modification. Unless we want to throw a toggle into Islandora somewhere that says, all right, I want all my image fetches to go through IIIF or, uh, or not. I don't, I don't know how folks feel about that. It seems to me like it ought to be default behavior. We've got IIIF, why make extra files? Um, but I don't know how other folks feel about it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's my view. I would, if we can leverage an existing technology, then we should always. So um, if that just means less stuff, that's cool. I'm a little hesitant to hear that it's like baked into the theme layer. And I'm pretty sure there's probably a way that we could do that like through a custom module or something instead. I would I think it's I would, simpler. It's uh, yeah. twigs. I, I try to keep everything within a twig template. Um, there's one function that's pulling a single variable, uh, your triple IF uh, um, URL. It has to fetch it. And the easiest way I found was have a module, you have the dot theme part uh, pull it in. But to be honest, this would take no time at all to integrate into the individual um, uh, module so like a, a viewer or whatnot to have it default and then look for a variable that says hey give me triple ifs variable if it's set and then uh a, a, a little checkbox to say enable triple if viewing or something would probably be good to add but literally would probably take a little bit of copy pasta maybe half a day to get it in uh i just i don't know where to put it <laughs> so it's in the theme <laughs> but yeah i think it'd be pretty simple okay well we can sort that out the delivery mechanism later. Uh, so anyway, that's where this is headed. Uh, you've probably heard me say that a couple of times in the last couple of months, but this time we're not refactoring this again. <laughs> We've got it to where it needs to be. And it's time to make those PRs. <laughs>